Hi everybody, today I'm doing a restaurant recreation for you. So what I'm doing is I'm making a recipe from California Pizza Kitchen. I happened to be down in Hollywood recently and I tell you, I had this great meal and I wanted to recreate it for you. Now on their menu, it's called uh, roasted garlic chicken with seasonal vegetables. And I'm telling you, the sauce in this was just out of this world. I really loved it. So. Today, I'm gonna to recreate that for you, and I tell you, it turned out great. I'm gonna call it garlic chicken with seasonal vegetables because I'm gonna be pan frying the, the chicken breast on the stove. We're gonna create this really delicious sauce that's basically like a lemon garlic sauce. And then we're gonna roast some vegetables, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, and some gold potatoes in the oven, and we're gonna mix it together with the sauce, get a nice light coating on it, and serve it up with that nice nicely seasoned chicken breast, and it is out of this world. So I'm Rockin' Robin, and I'm gonna show you how to do it right after this. We're gonna begin our recipe by preheating our oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit, because we're gonna be roasting our vegetables first. And then when that's happening, we'll go to our chicken and work on that and our sauce. First up, we have some cauliflower florets which if you need a tutorial on how to cut up a whole cauliflower, I'll leave a link for you down below in the description and right up here, uh, right above my head, there'll be a little link for you if you need that. Otherwise, I'm gonna place those into a large bowl. Now, next up we have our Brussels sprouts. Now, sometimes they're really gigantic and sometimes they're kind of small. So we wanna cut them relatively small so that they cook quickly, right? We don't want them to take too long. So we'll just cut off the ends and then we'll peel off any bad leaves, cut them in half, or cut them in quarters. Place them in the bowl as well, and then we move on to our potatoes. Now I'm using gold potatoes, and these are rather small and organic, by the way. I like to use everything organic if I can, and uh, I'll cut those into quarters as well. And I'll leave the peel on because, you know, there's no reason not to being organic. So you want wedges like this. Now that I have all my vegetables in the bowl, I'm gonna dress them up. So we're gonna sprinkle some olive oil in there. You know, we wanna be fairly generous. And I'm gonna just use my hands. You can use a spoon if you don't wanna use your hands, but I like using my hands because I can rub all the pieces and make sure that the potatoes get coated nicely. And same with everything else, the Brussels sprouts, the whole bit. So just work that in and try and coat all of the vegetables. Now we wanna make enough vegetables just to fit on a baking sheet where every piece is pretty much touching the surface of the pan. And that way they'll caramelize and cook up nicely. And if you have too many, use two pans. Okay, so I'm gonna add some garlic powder to this. I'm gonna sprinkle that in. I've got a little bit of oregano. We're gonna to toss some of that in. And some thyme. See if I can get that to come out not too quickly. There we go. And some salt. Salt's really important for the potatoes to bring out their flavor. So we'll mix that in and then I'm gonna season them one more time because everything just went on top. And I'm also going to pour just a little bit of olive oil in the pan, just a light coating. Again, just to keep things from sticking. And then we'll just pour these right on top and spread them out. These are going in the oven for, we'll check them at 20 minutes on 425 degrees Fahrenheit. So I just took these out of the oven, the uh, potatoes and the Brussels sprouts and the cauliflower, and I, I did check them at 20 minutes, like I said, and I turned them over. The potatoes stuck a little bit, not too bad, but this is what we ended up with. See this nice golden brown here on the Brussels sprouts? Man, that's the flavor, guys, and where it gets crispy and crunchy, love it. Just love it. So I'm gonna just keep these warm for now and uh, as we cook, whoops, as we cook our, um, the rest of our meal. Now for our chicken breast, I've got two really nice, good sized chicken breasts here. And because they're so thick, I'm going to butterfly them. I'm gonna thin them out a bit so that they'll cook up a lot quicker and it just works out much nicer that way. So we'll butterfly them, then I'm gonna season them. Oh, and if I need to pound it to make it even a little thinner in some, some parts of it, you can pound it and then season it up with some salt, garlic powder, some oregano and some thyme. All right, we're ready to start cooking our chicken. My recommendation is use a stainless steel pan. You'll get the best results with this recipe. 
Why use stainless steel? I'll tell you. Because I want the chicken to actually stick a little bit on the bottom here, which it will do, and create what's called a fond, which adds flavor to our sauce. And it's just way better when you do that. So I've got my pan over medium-high heat. Once your pan gets hot, we're going to add just a little bit of olive oil, maybe a teaspoon. Spread it around the pan. And then we'll lay our chicken into it. Once it gets in the pan, don't move it around or try to move it around. Just let it cook. And we'll let that go. We'll check it in about three or four minutes and see where we're at. So it's been about four minutes and I'm going to turn this over. And we'll go for another three to four minutes or until there's no longer any pink on the inside or 165 degrees. When the chicken is done, take it out and place it on a plate to keep warm. Now turn the temperature down to low. And of course you can see all of that fond in there, right? So I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil to the pan and some butter. So here's some finely diced onion. It's really the super fine dice. And remember guys, you can get the ingredient list below the video. We'll click where it says show more. So I'm gonna saute these onions for about five to 10 minutes. We've been sauteing this for about eight minutes. Now I'm gonna add the garlic. And we're gonna saute this for about a minute, minute and a half. Remember my temperature is still on low and we're just gonna slowly cook this in. Now we're gonna deglaze the pan. We're gonna add some white wine. This is some Sauvignon Blanc. And we'll just use a wooden spoon and kind of scrape the bottom of the pan. That'll pick up the rest of the brown bits. That's why the onions turned, you know, this nice brown colors because now they've picked up all that flavor. I'm gonna turn this up a little bit so that I can cook out some of that alcohol in the wine. We're also gonna add some chicken broth. I'm gonna bring this up to a simmer for a couple of minutes here before I add the rest of my ingredients. So we've got this up for a simmer. I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit. I don't want it, all the liquid to you know, cook away, so we'll just turn it down a bit. Now I'm gonna add some fresh lemon juice. This is soy sauce, or if you wanna make this gluten-free, you can use tamari sauce, which is the gluten-free version. Next up is my balsamic vinegar. This was the key to this recipe because I couldn't figure it out and this is what did the trick and it's only a little bit. But use a really good quality balsamic vinegar. Do taste for seasonings. You might want to add some garlic salt and we're going to let this simmer for about five to six minutes or so. Now I want to thicken up my sauce just a little bit. As you can see here it's pretty thin. So I'm going to take some flour. You can use regular flour or to make it gluten-free, you can use Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one baking flour. So I have just a teaspoon of flour here and I'm going to sprinkle some in. And that's about all you need to add to this. Now you can turn the sauce off and we're gonna add some honey to this because it needs to cut some of that acid a little bit. So I'm just adding a little bit of honey to this. And you can adjust it to your liking, but just work it in and then see how it tastes to you. The last thing we're gonna add is some parsley. So I'm gonna sprinkle that in. Give it a nice stir and things are ready to be put together. So, you're going to place your vegetables into a bowl. And we're going to take some of this sauce, this wonderful sauce, and we're going to drizzle it over the vegetables because I want them to have a coating of this. Just a light coating. So I'm going to place my chicken back in the sauce just to kind of reheat it again so that it's nice and hot when we serve it up. All right, we're ready to serve it up. If you can tell, I'm pretty jazzed about this. I love this recipe. Uh, I would just take, and the way it was served to me in the restaurant, is would take a nice spoonful of that nice, you know, bunch of vegetables with that coating of the sauce that just dresses them a little bit. Whoops, come back here. Take a piece of chicken. 
and place it right on top. And then of course, well, what I like to do is put a little more juice or a little more sauce on top of that chicken. And then dig in, I can't wait. I really can't wait for you guys to try this. I love it. I think you're gonna love it too. The flavors are just delicious. I mean, when you create that fond in the bottom of that stainless steel pan and add all of those flavors together, it's just incredible. It really is good. Very, um, it has a little hint of that balsamic. It's very mildly sweet, but not really sweet. You know, it's got a little tang to it. It's, it's really delicious, guys. Hope you enjoy it. All right, so I hope you enjoyed my recipe recreation. Give it a try. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I'd love to hear it. I know I, this is one of my favorite recipes. I mean, it is definitely in, in my rotation every, you know, every two weeks for sure. I love it. It's delicious. So if you would like to subscribe to my channel, please click the subscribe button. It's usually at the end of the video right over here, or there's one down below the video with a bell. That's a notification bell that tells you when new videos have come out from me. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.